Hi, this is Eric from Longbox Review at longboxreview.com. What follows is a conversation that guest co-host Travis and I had regarding the news coming out of San Diego Comic-Con 2014. Please forgive the audio at my end in this conversation. We were using uh, Google Hangouts to record this conversation, and the video camera that I was using uh, was not the was not positioned correctly and wasn't the best quality, so I sound a, a bit like I'm in a tunnel. Regardless, I hope you enjoy the conversation, and thanks for listening. All right, and Travis and I are here to talk about this little thing called Comic-Con International from San Diego, or otherwise known as SDCC. Uh, we have a lot of uh, news coming out of SDCC. Travis, would you say that San Diego is pretty much like the, the big announcement time for, for those of us um, who, who love comics, or at least one of them? Yeah, it's one of the big ones, that's for sure, yeah. Yeah. Uh, considering that, Travis, uh, what is your just? I just want to get your your uh, general impression uh, about the stuff, the news coming out of San Diego. What, what did you think about in think about that in general? Eh. <laughs> that's kind of how I thought about it too. I don't know. I did. I mean, there's some cool stuff, but as a whole, it did. It, I don't know. It didn't seem that exciting. That you know, there wasn't like some earth shattering. You know, oh my gosh, you know, kind of thing this year. At least nothing caught me as. I mean, there's some stuff I'm excited about, but there's nothing that if it didn't feel like like the big two, didn't feel like they spent the entire weekend trying to one ups each other with you know, who's got the bigger whatever. I don't know. It didn't. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> it, it, I don't know. I just. Or maybe this is the first year I didn't try to keep up with it while it was happening too. Mm -hmm. I mean, I kind of waited for it to all be done as a whole and wait for the dust to settle before I started kind of looking into any of it to see what was because I remember in years past I'd be set and trying to watch you know because obviously I don't go trying to watch you know different comic book news feeds the live things to try and catch what was going on and whatnot but I don't know see that's funny because uh, I remember you doing that maybe not last year but maybe the year before because uh, you were tweeting stuff as, 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 right. as announcements were going out and and I didn't really do that myself, but this year I made an effort to kind of keep up on things as as, as the weekend progressed. Mm -hmm. And so at the time that we're talking here, um, it's a it's a week later after the after the after Comic Con. Mm -hmm. um, so so but I did I, every day I would I would uh, I pay attention to stuff on Twitter. I was checking um, uh, CBR Comic Book Resources. They had a, 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 an SDCC 2014 tag, so I would just refresh that page every every little while just to see what the what the most recent news was coming out of it. And I have to say, just like just like you said before, and, and I agree with you, it was just kind of uh, eh, San Diego. It was really weird because I, I think I think we're kind of used to uh, things coming out of San Diego, uh, you know, like the big announcements and you know. The, this is this is kind of like the launching pad for for these these uh, these publishers uh, uh, plans for the next year. Yeah, except they're getting to be more and more as everybody releases all that stuff before the con. Yeah, I I, I was going to bring that up too. So even the big even the big two are releasing the information before the con. Yeah. So why do you figure they do that? Uh, because the comic book news, the actual straight up comic book news that has to do with comics gets lost, I think, in amongst the media blitz of the other all the other types of media that are that are going on now out of San Diego Comic Con. Now it's it's you know, what T V clips are we gonna see, what news you know, what what movie clips are we gonna see? It feels like that's a lot more of of what goes on at San Diego Comic Con. I mean obviously if you're there and you're one of the people, I'm sure it's a completely different feel, but for the person who's sitting outside just kind of watches the event happen, it feels like the con itself, what comes out of the con itself is um, is all that stuff. It's all the stuff, all this, the secondary stuff, or stuff that's got really, in my opinion, nothing to do with comics whatsoever. Obviously, you know, Mad Max, you know, movie announcement, that sort of stuff. It's, 
it's the pop culture. It's the pop culture stuff that that seems to be coming out of there. And I think it gets lost. I think that gets lost amongst all of that. Um, so I think they released this stuff early. And I think they released this stuff early because people want to get the jump on somebody else, I think. You know, it, it's who can report it first kind of a thing. And in this case, it's, you know, who can, you know, get as close as you can to the con, but still make the first announcement so everybody's talking about that and doesn't talk about whatever the other company's announcement's going to be kind of thing is what it feels to me like, you yeah. know, in some sense. Yeah, yeah um, I, I agree with that. Yeah, so... Well, and so speaking of that, uh, Image Comics, did, they had their Image Expo, I think it was the... It was either the night before preview night or yeah. it, was, it was the same day as preview night. Day before. Yeah. Day before, right? Mm -hmm. now, Which they've done for the last couple of years. They've they've had their expo the weekend before or midweek or something like that before the con. Okay, that well, that's what I was thinking because mm -hmm. I I remember that the news coming out of the Image Expo was was um, at least a few days before, but this was right on the on the heels of the opening of of, of San Diego, which I thought was really weird. Yeah, I, I don't know because see. I remember last year, you know, last year they did it like they did it like four or five days beforehand. Dark Horse the day before, um, not Dark Horse, was it Dynamite? Dynamite, like the, the day before um, the, the con, they released all of their stuff. I mean, they did an entire info dump. I think everybody was doing an info dump beforehand. You know, any of the non-big, you know, besides DC and Marvel, almost all of them did their, did their um, info dumps before, you know, before the actual con. So I just kind of think that that's, that's becoming the way it's going to be for a while. It's, why do you think that? What, what, what's the advantage of, of doing that? Because everybody's excited about the con, but people aren't in con fatigue yet. People aren't traveling yet. Well, in the case of, I guess in the case of the, the, this year's um, image one, you know, maybe people were or whatever. I just think that everybody's geared up and excited about the con, but aren't worn out by it yet, and we're all... Our attention is there. Our attention is there to listen to it. And by Saturday, after Friday, a full day of Friday stuff, and halfway through Saturday, I think people are starting to get kind of numb to all the information that's coming out. And so you get lost. You get lost in the shuffle. I think. So I think it. I think it's. I think that's why they do it beforehand. Plus the fact I think some of those companies, like Image, for instance, wants to separate themselves from San Diego Comic-Con and the big two and everything because they think they're special. They think they're that special <laughs> snowflake that um, that is better than everybody else and is what real comic books should be and a lot, a lot. I can go on on that. Uh, that whole speech that um, yeah. What's-His-Face did at the beginning of that thing I think is is um, pretty interesting and not 100% correct. But um, at any rate, uh, yeah, so I think that's why. I think it's, I mean, I think, it's your way to use the con to have the attention without you having to be at the con and 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 take all the lumps there, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, it was interesting. I, the last couple of years as New York Comic Con, which I think is in November, uh, uh, they it seemed like that, especially D.C., would kind of hold some things back for New York to try and, I, I guess, to try and make New York like the... the that it can't be the biggest because San Diego is, but but to but to help bolster New York into becoming something bigger than it than it had been. Uh -huh. um, but given DC's move to California here very soon, mm -hmm. I don't see that happening. Uh, so it's just it's just, it's a weird. I don't know. I just uh, this year just kind of struck me as kind of weird in in the in the sense of the the news coming out of San Diego didn't seem to be as bombastic and big and as important as in years past is all. Yeah. Yeah, I can't think of either company as far as their books are concerned. I can't think of an announcement that came at the con that was significant. I remember last year, you know, we had the, you know, you had Neil Gaiman come on and and do his announcement that the you know new Sandman book was going to come out and whatnot, and that was a big you know a big deal. I remember I'm trying to think there were some Marvel things too that were comic book oriented that were big deals that came out during the con, <clears throat> and I I can't name anything right off the top of my head. Really, that was announced at the con from those two companies that have to, that that are comic book oriented, not not movie and yeah, the other yeah. all the other stuff that's that's involved. 
Well, now there were some things that I wanted to I wanted to point out, uh, but but again, a lot of this stuff is not like big big announcements. They're just things that interested me for the news coming out of out of uh, San Diego. Uh -huh. So uh, we're going to talk about some of those. And if you, Travis, of course, if you have um, anything to talk about, please sure. please uh, throw those in there. But let's start. I want to I want to I want to throw this your way, Travis, um, because I have the information in front of me. Uh, let's see here. So CBR had a poll. Uh, what was the biggest San Diego Comic Con announcement? And of course, you know this is this is just the people who decided to go to CBR and and actually right. vote, which which that was me. Um, what, what were the choices? <laughs> so okay, so I'm gonna, I'm going to read you the top ten. Okay. And I want I want you to guess what the the number one chosen oh. thing was. It's pop quiz time. Superman you're versus back, Batman. You're you're back in school. Um, hold on. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes, you're right. Um, ah. jo Joaquin Phoenix in talks for Doctor Strange movie, which that was kind of strange. <clears throat> Whatever. Uh, Avengers: Age of Ultron poster complete. I didn't even look at that. Nope, neither did I. Uh, Marvel Greenlight's Guardians of the Galaxy sequel announces release date. Oh, good God. This is before, of course, before the movie. Now, you've right. seen the movie, right? Yes, I have. I have not. I'm in the minority, so. Okay. Uh, Rachel Ghoul and Arrow Season 3. Comixology announces DRM-free backups. Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell writing Evil Dead TV series. Image Comics, uh, 12 new Image Expo announcements. Marvel announces Star Wars comics. Uh, new look at Ben Affleck as Batman in the Dawn of Justice movie. I really, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a side ten here. <laughs> I really hate that they're calling it Batman versus Superman. I really hate that. That's all I'm gonna say about it. And finally, <laughs> Gal Gadot. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, Wonder Woman revealed in new photo. Those are the top ten items chosen by voters at CBR. Travis, which is number one? What what were the last two? The, 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 oh, the Affleck, the Affleck, better Affleck picture, right? Yeah, ben? yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's got to be the one of the last two. It's either Wonder Woman or it's um, it's Wonder Woman. I'm going with Wonder Woman. And it's you not, are correct, sir. Yeah, yeah, right on. With nearly 32 percent of the vote. Yeah. Which is which is a huge margin here because the the next the next one is the Ben Affleck as Batman, uh -huh. um, and it's like just under nine percent. So that is not, however, neither one of those um, is what I would have chosen out of those top ten. What about you? If you had um, to pick, pick one of those ten, which one would I you choose? Pick one of those ten that I thought was the top news thing. Oh wow! Um, I'd probably go with the the image stuff, the you know, the, the yeah. two, because that's what interests me the most out of <laughs> out of that stuff. All right. Yeah, I kind of thought you might say that. Yeah. And would you I'm, ho I'm hoping we can talk about that here in a minute. Okay, so actually, I I would have picked, and I, well, I did. Um, I voted for uh, the Comixology announcement because I think that is I think that's just huge news. Now it, it is. It is right now. It's not. It's not much. Uh, when they announced it, within an hour, maybe two at the most, I got an email from Comixology. Uh, letting me know that some of my comics uh, were available for this this backup, this DRM not, free backup not thing. D, not DC or Marvel, right? No, no. Um, so it's a step in the right direction, and it may cause me to be more of a digital comics reader if they expand the DRM free uh, to other publishers. Well, not. It's, that makes it sound like Comixology is the one making it the choice. Not control, it's, right. No, it's not. If, if the publishers um, get on, the other publishers get on board with with this. Not going to happen. <laughs> wait, wait. Uh, that the other publishers won't get on board. The other publishers won't get on board. Yeah. Uh, Marvel and DC. No. Especially Marvel. Uh, Marvel feels to me like they're working awfully hard to control their own, to get people to go to their digital store and read their digital stuff and and I, I so no I don't see that I don't see that at all 
And I certainly don't see them. I certainly don't see them allowing a third party to be the access to get your stuff and get it that way. But I think it's awesome. I mean, I I thought it was huge. I thought it was huge news when um, last year, because it was last year, the Image announced that they were going that way. That they, you could buy the books from them, and then you had it to use anywhere you wanted to, any way you wanted to. And that's how it should be. You know, this we well, have to go to a server and get it off of their server. And that's the only place you can look at it through is bullcrap, I think. It's one of the biggest reasons, well, one of many reasons, but a pretty huge one as to why I don't like digital comics. I have to admit, if it went all that way with all the stuff, it would be, it would be more, it would be worth me using it on occasion. But, you know, the big two not going to be put into that now. I understand why Marvel doesn't, though, with that, with the Marvel Unlimited where you've got access mm -hmm. to everything you know, on a on a subscription basis, you know, per month or year or whatever it is, you obviously aren't going to use that use that that sales and then allow you to just download all this stuff off somewhere, because mm -hmm. yeah, you just spend every night, right, just downloading the bejesus out of all those thousands of titles, wouldn't you? Yeah, I would. Did, speaking of that, did you hear? Uh, so Marvel did a, a special for San Diego. They did a special um, introductory uh, price. For their unlimited service, I think it was. It was like ninety-nine cents or something like that. I want to say. I don't, I don't oh, remember yeah. the details, but 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 I heard they crashed the servers again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I I have to admit, when I saw that announcement, I I, I get I got the email um, from them. Uh, I really thought about signing up. Now, I think it was. Like I said, it was an introductory price, and then it would go up to I don't know whatever it is that they charge for that. Uh, Seventy-five bucks or something. Yeah, yeah, whatever it is. And it, sorry, it's just it's just not worth it to me to pay that much money a month for for to get to get all that backlog. Yeah. Especially since again, I I I don't have the file. I don't have the files, you know, DRM free. So. But like I said, you're renting comics. Yeah, you're, you're renting comics, just like you rent a movie. Same thing, just like your HBO you were just talking about. You're renting it, right? You don't own that stuff. <laughs> yes, but comics you, are not comics to me are not um, disposable items of entertainment. Ah, okay. So I, I want I want them. I, whether it's a paper copy or a digital copy, I want a copy that I can do something with. TV, I don't care about. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Anyway, I like I said, I thought that was the 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 biggest announcement out of San Diego. I just just where Comicsology and these other publishers are pushing um, the digital um, world, so to speak, I, I found very interesting. Okay, so uh, so I'm gonna talk. We're gonna talk about some of the the, the comic related stuff, uh, and then we'll 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 talk some uh, media related things. So next up, uh, did you see Travis the multiversity map? Yep, I have it all dedicated in my head right now. What do you mean dedicated? The whole map. I have it. Oh, you? Oh, come on. I have it memorized. <laughs> No, you don't. So, what do you think of this map? So Grant Morrison came up with this concept, and then they they had somebody. It, it was confusing because I look when I look at the picture that Entertainment Weekly published, it uh -huh. says Ryan Hughes, uh, design, illustration, and additional. Uh, it's really small. I can't read it. Something details. Um, but but the report that I saw on CBR said something about Cameron Stewart having something to do with it too. My understanding is Cameron Stewart does some of the art for one of the um, you know for some of the titles. I mean because I've seen what I've seen is is stuff talking about Cameron Stewart helps Grant Morrison um, re envision the Marvel family and stuff like that. Right. I, I didn't know. I didn't know that he had to do anything with the map itself. Maybe I just misread that report on CBR, but I swear it said something about uh, Cameron Stewart having something to do with the map itself. But yeah. 
probably I'm probably wrong about that. I, I there's something else that we're going to talk about down down the list. Well, next on the list, I guess. Where I swear I read something on CBR when it was announced, and then when I went back to uh, read it again to take some notes, that bit of information was just not there. So either my brain just making stuff up, or they they did some sort of editing and took some information out. I don't know. It was weird, but anyway. But but let's, let's, let's back to the map. Um, I really I really found it interesting, you know how. Grant and, and whoever else um, is is taking everything that we know about the DC universe, you know, the source wall and all the various worlds, uh, incorporating the new gods and incorporating the endless from from Neil Gaiman, Sandman, uh, you know, all of the all of the gods that we've seen over the last 75 years of DC Comics, you know, just kind of and and then of course the the, the whole uh, 52 universes, which came out of the 52 series, and then remember when? So the, you know they announced that, uh, or they, they revealed that, and in, in, the, towards the end of the the 52 series, and then did next to nothing with it after that. And so this has been percolating for for what five years now, I think is what I what I read. Yeah. And and so so some of the things that I that I uh, read about with Grant Morrison. Uh, while he was being interviewed about this, was that he he kind of felt that uh, now this this whole idea of the multiversity and the 52 universes makes a lot more sense with the new 52 and and the focus that that DC has on the multiverse. You know, with Earth 2, uh, which I think is crazy. Which I think is crazy because what was Flashpoint <laughs> and and the the hard reboot of the entire DC universe about it was about flushing all of these things so they didn't exist. Well, so we simply had. No, 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 no. I, yes. I will argue with I will, you on this, Travis. Uh, and I will too because they are quoted. <laughs> I don't have the time to go back and look, but they were quoted. Dan Dito was quoted as saying, "We are simplifying our universe by condensing it all down to one place." That is right. why you, they did. That you are con you are confusing. No. You are confusing the crisis. With what happened with Flashpoint, that is no. not the, that was not the intent no. of Flashpoint. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. It was to get rid of all that stuff. I understand that it was originally talked about back then, but there is there are quotes with those guys saying that this is going to clean up our universe, condense it down to one place. No, not one place. I will agree with you. It was it was to simplify it. And and condense things down. You know, now it's it's, it's the five-year timeline. Earth, so you didn't have all those Earth twos and Earth Xs and Earth whatevers. But they, yeah. we we really didn't have those anyway at that point. Technically, they existed because because of fifty two, but they were not used. So it was like it was like they weren't even there anyway. Mm. I'm gonna be going on a hunt now. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Me too. I'm gonna be finding those quotes. <laughs> All right, all right. Well, anyway, so I, I just I find it really interesting that that Grant has come up with this this uh, grand scheme, and it seems to be uh, according to him, and it makes a certain amount of sense to me too that it's uh, it's tying into the the new Fifty Two universe, you know, in some fashion, whether whether you agree with it or sure. not. <laughs> all right. Um, okay, so I mentioned before. Uh, uh, this, the, the thing that I read, I thought I read, and it was gone. So, really, the only the only comic book news, Travis, that I actually got excited about was the Spider Woman ongoing that's coming from Marvel. Yeah. <laughs> In the face. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I love Spider Woman. I think Spider Woman is a great character. In and out of being Spider Woman, I think she's an interesting character. I mean, I you know I even have the full run of the original. The, you know the original book. Um, I, I think she's great. Um, I question who they have doing the book, though. Um, I don't know if that's a positive. Sweet. The artist, the artist Land. Greg Land, pretty, yeah. He's pretty notorious for. Um, um, I don't know how I want to. Not very body positive, or. Um, he tends to it, to me it feels like he samples um lots of like fashion magazines and um model stuff and yeah 
I, 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 so I, I think that's unfortunate. I think that's going to immediately um, chase away a large segment of audience that might be excited about this book but aren't excited because of who they've chosen to have be the artist for it. So maybe I'm just ignorant uh, of the controversy with Greg Lamb. I know of it, but you know, I, I look at I look at the stuff that he's done in the past. What was it uh, that he did for CrossGen? I think it was Sojourn. Uh huh. I thought that was. I really enjoyed the art in that book. <laughs> and and now he's doing um, Mighty Avengers, and that's okay too. I mean, just looking at what's on the page, I'm enjoying it. Mm -hmm. You know how he go goes about doing it, and and you know the other stuff that you brought up. That you know that aside, I'm just looking at what's on the page, and I, I you know I'm enjoying the, the the storytelling. Yeah, I'm not horribly familiar with his um with his work, other than um going and looking it up to see what. And I'm not horribly excited. I mean, he's got a lot of work, and I don't know if that's just because those are the popular pictures that people like to throw up, just like. You know, people are going to pick the the worst Leidfeld pictures they possibly can to throw up and say this is why we should hate Leidfeld, and that may be the case with 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 Land to tell the truth, as far as what I know of his work or not. But I can see it. I mean, he's got lots of work where it really is kind of cheesecakey pinup, you know, large breasted, whatever. And if it's going to be if it's just going to be a bunch of Spider Woman striking poses, ridiculous poses all the time, I I'm not going to be interested in reading it. I don't care how cool. It's written. I, I think the character is great, um, but I'm not going to be reading Wonder Woman either for the same reasons. So, yeah. You know, so, so you're uh, not going to get you're not going to give uh, um, the Finches one, you know, like a, no. a storyline no. to see no. how to let them no. prove themselves. No. No? no, no, no. I'm hoping they don't make it past an arc. <laughs> I I kind of think they will. Um, if for some reason, DC wants to keep uh, David Finch around. Because they are paying him. They've got an exclusive contract with the guy. That's why. Yeah. You know, they gave him an exclusive contract to get him in the first place. And lo and behold, he's not that great. But um, <laughs> not, when it, not when it comes to women, not in my opinion. All of these uh, women look exactly the same and and blah. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, limit it to just his women, but that's just my opinion. Well, I mean, I... I mean, I, I, I will be the first to say I think he draws a real kick-ass Batman. He can make Batman just look big, buff, meaner than hell. Looks like the kind of you know big, lumbering, you know, crush you kind of Batman. I think that Batman's a cool, a cool-looking Batman. Um, but, but no, it's. I think the other stuff is horrible. So no, I'm not giving Wonder Woman any any sort of a chance. I've finally decided for sure that. Um, I, I'm hoping the sales drop so bad that they. Scramble to put. Uh, anybody else on the book? I don't <laughs> care who. Okay. All right. So, but and so I'm kind of ugh, about the Spider Woman thing. I'll I'll get it because I'm not having a definitive opinion yet. I'm probably gonna pick it up because I'm interested in that. I like I said I like I like the character. Um, would like to see some interesting stuff with the character. Mm -hmm. So, that's that's cool. Um, you know, but I'm very apprehensive. So uh, one of the things that, that got me excited about this, and this is this goes back to what I was saying before about uh, the the bit of information that I, I swear I read and now I can't find anywhere, was mm -hmm. that so they're 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 bringing or they're they're using Spider Woman as kind of a um, a leader of a small group of of people, including the new Silk character that's currently in the Amazing Spider Man run, uh, and. This is the part that, that I keep harping about. I swear to God, that article said that Spider Girl would be in it. And actually, uh, the, so Spider Girl had a, a short, short lived series a few years ago. And I just kind of fell in love with the character with that series. And, and I, I, I don't think we've seen a whole lot of that character since then. There was something, uh, a short uh, mini series during the Spider Island event. And that's the only thing I read was that Spider Girl. Uh, mini out of that whole thing, just because I like the character. It, it, she, the character reminded me a lot of of uh, uh, Stephanie Brown. Stephanie Brown, Brad girl. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was, I was kind of. That's, so, that's what I heard. But that was also one of those titles that Marvel used as a thing to point a finger at and see to go see girl comics don't work. Two thousand nine. Oh, really? 
really? 2009, right? Isn't that about when that Spider Girl run was running? I uh, think 2009? so. Yeah, and and at the time, Marvel was quoted as going, "We we try doing girl books, and this is what happens when we do girl books." Obviously, they've changed their tune, but mm-hmm. but nobody bought the book, right? I mean, that's why. It, oh, yeah. It went nine issues. Yeah, it was it was short lived. Yeah, because nobody was buying it, because they didn't promote it. The only reason I even knew it existed is because you were talking about it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have had a clue that it was even out there. <laughs> you know, so. Hey, and you know what's funny about that? The only reason that I even got that series was that Marvel had produced. You see, see, it's weird because they produced this this uh, basically a flyer, uh, previewing a bunch of stuff coming out really soon, all having to do with Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a short, there was a, a few pages um, featuring Spider Girl in it, and for some reason I kept going back to that 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 flyer um, over the course of like two weeks. So I, you know, I, I initially flipped through, like, and eh, Spider Man stuff. You know, I just kind of yeah. did, didn't care. But I, for some reason, I kept pulling that flyer out, and and I kept gravitating towards Spider Girl, and it just seemed like uh, fun fresh look at, at a young uh, female superhero in the Marvel Universe that I, I had no, you know, I had no um, experience with. Mm-hmm. So finally it came out and I picked it up off the shelf and then added it to my pull list after that. So it, it's weird that, like I said, they, they, they did this promotional flyer thing and then and basically, it. yeah, and basically just said, oh, there you go. And then I, presumably that was, that was it. That's all they wanted to do with it. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, they, are they putting Spider Woman in a different costume? They aren't, are they? Uh, not that I've okay. Based on the I saw stuff some I, read. I saw some stuff floating around Twitter, and it may have just been people having their own fun trying to re envision her costume as something else. I'm just curious. So yeah, you know what? That is one of those costumes I, I don't think you should mess with. I, no. I think I think they came up. Whoever came up with that costume, I don't remember who who. You those have original you have, issues. Yeah, you have that original run. Remember I do, but I don't remember. It? I don't remember. Dang, I don't either. Uh, Artist-wise, I can't remember who was on it. Anyway, uh, yeah, I, whoever came up with the design is, was is, is that like Infantino? Is that Infantino? Uh, well, I don't know. That sounds really, that sounds familiar though. I mean, he I know he did covers and stuff for for a while, so I don't know if he did the first ones that I can't remember. I'm not good at remembering stuff like that. <laughs> some people are just like some comic book fans are just really good at being able to bang that stuff off, and I can't I can't yeah. do that. Yeah, but I, um, I used to be able to do that. I can't. Yeah. Too old. old. Too old. Yep. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I don't think so either. I mean, I you know, I, I like that costume. It's not. I mean, yeah, it's skin tight, but it's not. You know, it's not ridiculous as far as you know, like some costumes where it's more flesh than 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 costume and whatnot. Um, I, I I do. I think that's a pretty solid costume. I really, and coming from the era it came from, I think it's a pretty solid costume. You know, as far as the reasons that they choose to make costumes the way they do nowadays is interesting anyway, so. Okay, that's that. It's a cosplayable costume, and so that makes it a positive thing, I guess, right? Okay, okay. That, that's what I meant. That's okay. what I meant by that. I wasn't, wasn't sure where you are going with that one. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's what I meant by that. I mean, that's one of the reasons why, that's one of the reasons why, um, the creators of the latest version of the new, the, the up and coming Batgirl, the reason her costume looks the way it does. That it's, what, it it's is more one of the motiv- It is one of the motivations as to why as to why it is. Heck yeah. Wait, wait. Did someone actually say that, or is that just yes. uh, someone's no. supposition? No, Cameron Stewart, the one who created the costume, that is one of the things he said about it. Was is that this is a a more relatable and cosplayable costume? Literally, mm. came out. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, I'm okay with that. I, I have no objections. I just think it's kind of weird. That's the and now I, I'm really wishing. I'm really wishing that um, I don't think it's weird. The more you can get fans invested in the character, and that's just another way to invest in the character. The more successful your book's going to be. You hope, right? You hope that some of those cosplayers are going to translate into actual readers too. So anything you could do to make your character more relatable for people to want to go out and buy it, the better. I'm I'm wishing I had you know that I had um, invested in. Um, um, shares of yellow Doc Martens is all I gotta say. So, because I figure people will be buying those left and right. But oh my lord, how is that? How? So so okay. Given your your point, your point okay. of view there, or or Cameron's point of view. Um, so we we often you and I 
and and I think the comic book community at large often point to how film adaptations of our comics do not translate to sales of said comics. Uh -huh. See, I, in my mind, I'm, I'm thinking this cosplay thing is the same thing. So we're not going to... Yeah, you don't think so? I think cosplayers are closer to comics than movie watchers are closer to comics. Okay. Cos I, I believe cosplayers honor the source material better than a movie would ever, and movie viewers um, honor the um, the um, source material. Okay, sure, but so I, I I think it's I think it's a closer I, I think it's easier to get a cosplayer invested to read a comic than a moviegoer. I bet you more cosplayers read the material that they're cosplaying versus moviegoers read the material that it's based on. Okay. Yeah, you, you, you're right, yeah, of course. Um, I, it, just, it just seems to me that it won't necessarily... I, don't, I'm just, I, I question the premise of that statement. <laughs> I, I, just think the, I just think the more you can radicalize your fan base, the better off you are. Okay. So if you put yes, her in a sure. costume, if you put her in a costume that every you know, teenage to 40-year-old woman can jump into reasonably easy, they're going to be more excited about that character than if you put her in Starfire's costume, which there's probably 10 people who are going to be comfortable sporting that costume. Sure, sure. But how many, how many, I, we're off on a tangent now, but um, how many, what, so I look at a, a lot of stuff on Tumblr, and um, I subscribe to a few cosplay Tumblrs. Mm -hmm. And the majority of the Batgirls I see are Steph Brown. Followed, right close, followed by, right, right now, but I'm just saying, they're, they're, they're choosing the character that they like to, to cosplay as. Mm -hmm. I don't see, I, I guess, I, uh, my thoughts are not clear here. I, I, I guess I don't see how one relates to the, one, one idea relates to the other one. Because, okay, so, so I'm not seeing New 52 Batgirl maybe because that costume is difficult, but Steph Brown's is less difficult to do? I know I think that most um, people who are going to cosplay Barbara Gordon Batgirl are going to go back to an older, harken back to an older Barbara Gordon Batgirl than they are the current Batgirl. Okay, so why would they change that just because the new costume is is cosplay friendly? Because it's radically, because I, I think it's radically different. Yeah, it's it's radically different, not not slightly different. It's radically different with a completely different approach to the character, a completely different look to the character. I think you're going to keep a lot of the Batgirl fans that you have had, and you're going to pick up a whole different group of of Batgirl fans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I have a teenage daughter who I will bet big money will be a bigger Batgirl fan coming out of this than she was the um, prior Barbara Gordon Batgirl. Yeah. I have to say, um, my granddaughter Madison is, is, is a big Batgirl fan in general, mm -hmm. um, mostly because of the Young Justice series. Right, right. Uh, but she, uh, so I, I see her really liking, potentially liking the, the, the new take on Batgirl, uh, which is why I'm going to start getting... Uh, that series for her to read. Mm -hmm. Where I wasn't all that comfortable letting her read the, even the Gail Simone written stuff. So well, it's pretty brutal. Yeah. 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 Um, and and I'm not saying that Cameron Stewart or anybody else is saying this is what's going to sell the comic is having this more cosplayable. I'm just saying that it was a thought in the design of the character when they redid the costume was to make this something that would be. A more reasonable thing for someone to attempt to cosplay and whatnot. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. That, that, and, that, and, that makes and sense. And it seems smart to me. I mean, you know, why? Yeah. Anything, like I said, anything that radicals the um, fan base more and more, the better off you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Okay, um, let's let's move on. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the Image Comics, the the announcement. I don't want to necessarily go through each and every of the twelve. Um, so let's just talk about the ones that you're, unless you're, you're interested in all 12. Um, 
let's just talk about the ones that, that really excited you. Well, my wallet's going to hurt. Uh, oh, really? Hitting into 2015. I don't think there's very many of these that I'm not going to at least try out. Um, just because they sound they sound interesting. They they sound well. One of the ones I thought was really interesting. And I can't tell you a single thing about it. I can't even tell you the name of the comic. I do not think. Um, because I I haven't looked at all of it yet. But of course, um, right now I'm really loving Moon Knight. The creative team that's on Moon Knight is all leaving after six issues, five issues, whatever it is. Um, and, and are going about their merry way, right? They're, you know, Warren only signed up for six issues to, to lo- relaunch the character, and then he's going to go off to do other stuff or whatever, uh, Warren Ellis. And, um, you know, the other creative people on the team decided, well, they're going to leave too and let all new people come on and whatnot. I'm like, oh, wow, that's kind of a bummer because I've been really liking these, these, these things. Well, lo and behold, that entire creative team is doing an image book. Yes, it's called Injection. I, yeah. I have no idea what it's about, but it already has, it already <laughs> has my money. Okay. It already has my money. What's it about? Okay. You know what it's about? So here, here's the here's the uh, the uh, the copy from Image. Injection explores how loud and strange the world is becoming, and the sense that it's all bubbling into chaos, a chaos poised to become the next new normal, and that we did this to ourselves without thinking for a second about how we were go how we were ever going to live inside it. I would never buy a comic based on that description. But it sounds like a Warren Ellis book. It does, and 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 for the exact same reason that you you just mentioned, I'm going to try this out because it's it's Ellis, Declan Shelby, and uh, the Jordy 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 Blair, Jordy Blair. Yeah. Uh, doing doing. Oh wait. Colors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jordy Blair is also on the Kurt Busiek book. That's yep. weird. She colors okay. like ten. She colors ten to twelve books a month. So. Oh okay. There you go. That's so, why she has an Eisner, because she works her ass off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm going to give this based only on the, the creative team, because, man, that description is like nothing to me. Yeah, well, you know what's funny is, is that, that's, if that, com- if this comic would have been released three or four years ago, I'd be apprehensive to pick it up. Um, you know, Ellis was still doing comic books, but he was kind of off on the fringes, as kind of. Getting lost in Ellis, I want to say, getting lost in his own, in his own, um, his own internet Jesus ness. <laughs> and I love the guy. Don't get me wrong, love the guy, love a lot of his work and whatnot. But there was a while there where he just, it felt like he did, like he wasn't sure he had something to say. And um, I think this break away from comics, him coming back, the stuff that I've been reading of his since he's been kind of back and got and putting himself out there, has kind of been exciting again. And so mm. I'm excited for it now. But you're right. That description of what of what the book is about, if the, I was told that's what the book was going to be about, you know, four or five years ago, I would have been going, oh, oh boy, I'm going to give it a shot, but I, I'd be nervous because um, mm-hmm. I, you know, read some of his last stuff before he kind of took a break, and it was, it was getting kind of, I don't know, I don't know what I'll say about it, but at any rate, um, but I'm excited about that book because I've been, but because Moon Knight has just been so great that um, I'll be curious to see what these what they can do. They seem to have a, a decent working relationship, so I'm excited to see what comes out of comes out of that as far as that book. Okay. Um, what else? I um, shoot, got a blank. Let's see. Um, the Rick Remender um, uh, Murphy book, um, Tokyo. What's it called? Tokyo. Can't remember the name of it. Shoot. Um, Hold I'm on, looking I'm forward. Up. I'm looking forward to that one also. Tokyo Ghost. Yeah. Sean um, Murphy. It's Sean Murphy and Matt Hollingsworth on colors. Sean yeah. Murphy doing that. Oh man. Yeah. Why? So, why did it have to be Remender? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, you're, I, you're not a you're not a big Remender fan. I've been enjoying no. uh, Remender's um, um, image books, his sci-fi based books. I've been enjoying those, so I'm. I'm on board for that. Just those two creators puts me on board. I'm excited. I'm excited about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that. Trying to think what what the other ones were that I was. I, I'm um, Rumble. I'm looking forward to Rumble too, just because I'm looking forward to seeing um, um, John Arcudi do another another book outside of um, um, outside of Dark Horse. 
Mm. You know, he's usually a- attached to a lot of Dark Horse type stuff. I've enjoyed a lot of the things that he's he's done. Um, it's kind of a, I guess it's kind of a horror sort of a book. Um, it's like a, what, I guess it's quoted as being a Scarecrow Conan book. Yeah. So, in, that's... In, in a Lewis C.K. TV show directed by David Fincher, that's the tagline. Yeah. See, that would be, I don't know, that sounds cool to me. That sounds like that's going to be um, um, a, a lot of fun. So, um, Intersect, I'm actually looking forward to yes. um, Ray yes. Fox Intersect. That art that's going to be on that is going to be amazing. It looks like the whole book is painted and stuff. It is. So, so that's. But yeah. but here, let me let me read this this, this the copy again because I, sure. this is this is this this is like like the Warren Ellis book. Bodies shift and merge, warring with themselves. Blood rains from the skies. A child's song is translated into toxic, thought-destroying whispers. Everything is changing. Everything is wrong. This is the world of Intersect. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> exactly right. It sounds like actually these uh, Intersect and and. Um, uh, injections sound like they, they could be part of the same universe. Yeah. Um, but but the, the painted cover that I'm looking at here with uh, by Ray Fox just looks really cool. Isn't this also the book that when, when Ray Fox went to talk about it, he described it as basically being um, Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks if told through like the Black Lodge or something like that. It was some, some oh, other... Yeah, I think you're right. Some other crazy pants reference. I'm like, oh, if you can pull that off, man, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be raving about this book, kind of a thing. So, so that, that you know, that's pretty exciting too. I, I'm not sure what I think of the Inhumans. I, I'm kind of a sucker for um, ape man type books anyway. And the guys that are doing it, um, what um, uh, Keller and Neely, aren't they the guys that were doing like Booms, uh, Planet of the Apes? Um, um, books, I think that might be fun. I mean, the cover, the cover image I've seen of it is a bunch of um, ape men riding, um, you know, riding choppers like there's like there's some sort of motorcycle gang. That that yeah. could be, that could be amusing. Um, I, I don't know. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna really gonna try them all. Um, I I want to like. My <laughs> problem is, yeah. I mean, I want to like Southern Cross. That's a that's a um, Becky Cloonan and a- Andy uh, Blargang um, book. Uh, Becky's writing it though; she's not doing the art on it. Becky's kind of Clunan's kind of become this a writer now, which mm-hmm. I think is my understanding from watching some interviews. There has always been her goal, really, is to be a writer more than the artist. The artist was kind of her her way in, which I think's a lot of work for it to be your way into being a writer. That, that's um, really interesting too. That, that you don't normally hear about that kind of a path. Yeah, but I mean, good for her. I mean, I guess you have a much greater understanding of what you're telling your artist you want, having had to do it, I guess. Um, I want to be interested in that because of the creators that are on it, but it's I don't know that it's going to be something that interests me because it's kind of a it sounds like it's a um a, like a mecha type story in some sense was potentially what I got out of it, but I mean I, but I could be wrong. Like I said I haven't actually all I've been kind of I haven't actually read the solicits for it. All I've done was kind of listen to what were the news that was being thrown around on on Twitter and stuff. So. I may be somewhat okay. misinformed. Okay, so this is this is one of the few books out of this twelve that I'm actually interested in. Oh yeah. Um, so here here's the copy. Uh, now boarding Southern Cross Tanker Flight 73 to Titan. Alex Braith is on board, retracing her sister's steps to the refinery moon, hoping to collect her remains and find some answers. The questions keep coming though. How did her sister die? Where did her cabin mate disappear to? Who is that creep across the hall? And why does she always feel like she's being watched? Oh, okay. Uh, Bellinger, Andy Bellinger, referred to it in offhanded fashion as being like, quote, the shining on a haunted spaceship. Oh, okay. See, so that would be cool. All right, I, 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 I'll probably end up getting it. I'm also interested in The, the Descender also. Uh, less so because Jeff Lemire is writing it because I'm a bit, I'm a bit gun-shy on Jeff Lemire after Trillium. The way Trillium ended, I was not happy with the way Trillium ended. Um, but I'm curious to see Dustin Wynn do an independent book. And um, I'm, I'm interested to see him do an independent book and him doing like a robot boy. Um, I think it could be really interesting with um, you know, him doing the painting and stuff for that book. So, Well, the, the, yeah, that cover image looked, looked good, um, but... 
yeah, I besides the artist, I'm not all that <laughs> interested in the in the story. Yeah. yeah. So the those, other, go ahead. Yeah, but those those are the ones that 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 piqued my interest the most. Of course, I'm still chomping at the bit for like Bitch Planet to come out and some of these other books that were announced, you know, last year that hasn't seen the light of day yet as far as um you know, as far as some of the books. Because that's one thing. You get these announcements. We're talking late for a lot of these books, like the, the Tokyo one. Um, we're talking like October, November of 2015 before these are actually going to be are going to be out there. Right. You know, so announcing it now and the reality of when we're actually going to see it, it could be two different things. Because there's a number of – there's Odyssey uh, that was announced last year um, – that um, I'm looking forward to that, that that retelling of Odyssey in a very strange fashion by uh, Matt Fraction with um, mm, right. I can't remember. I, I'm drawing a blank. I think well, I think his name is like Christian Ward. I think is his name. I'm drawing a blank. It's the guy who did the artwork for um, Infinite Vacation. He's doing the artwork on that. I'm very excited to see that book. See the light of day. I'm really curious about Kelly Sue's Bitch Planet. Um, I I, I want to see that. You know, just because that just sounds you know in your face. And and I'd, so I'm kind of looking forward to, to seeing that. Um, you know, that was some of the some of the stuff that was announced at last year's um, Images Expo, and we now, haven't seen that stuff yet. Right. Now, uh, remind me, they announced ten titles, right, for the, from that last time because it was like their tenth anniversary or something. I think so. I think so. And we've seen two or three. We got we got um, well we got. Um, the Divine and the Wicked instead of um, Phonogram because that's what originally was was oh. announced and they kind of you know changed gears the two the, the creators on the book changed gears and decided to do this other story fine um, we've gotten Southern Bastards uh, we got we got Low just just came out this this week as of us doing this show um, we got Black Science so I guess we got four we got four of the of the books, there's you know announced was more Casanova was announced. Um, mm -hmm. The um, this the Odyssey book was announced. Uh, Bitch Planet was announced. There was that Graham book that was kind of like his kind of a um, it was kind of a jam book. He he had a, a world um, some sort of an eight ball was it called like eight ball or something something like that. That book hasn't actually come out yet. Oh, so I stretched my memory. What else was there? Oh no! I mean, no, I guess trees came out. Trees came out. That was announced mm. at last year's also. So okay. about half of them, about half of them came out. Yeah, so. I said, I said, I said the tenth anniversary. That can't be right. Image didn't start in in uh, two thousand three, two thousand four. So twentieth anniversary? I don't, I don't know. Anyway, I just remember the number ten. They announced ten titles. Yeah. So about half of what they announced has actually come out. Um, but that seems to be the case all the all the time, though. And some of the stuff we never, I don't think we ever actually see the announcement. But that doesn't mean we're actually going to see it. So, yeah. uh, the stuff that gets announced, what we're actually going to see, who knows? So the only other book that uh, I was remotely interested in, we haven't talked about this one, is Tooth and Claw. I had mentioned it uh, briefly earlier, but it's by Kurt Busiek, Ben Dewey, and Jordi uh, Jordi Belair. Um, I don't know, it just I, I like Kurt Busiek in general. Uh, mm -hmm. Pretty much anything that guy does, I like. So and this, so, but this is a it's a uh, it says swords, sorcery, animal wizards, gods, empires, golems of radioactive decay, crystal and badlands, con women, ancient armories, young love, mystery, blood and death and treachery and destiny. It's an epic story you won't want to miss out on. Okay. Yeah. Well, really, for me, it's only three uh, out of the out of the twelve that I'm probably going to get. Yeah. Oh, four if I get intersect, but I'm 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 a, I, I'm only interested in that because of how it looks. Uh, the story doesn't, as as described, does not really interest me. So yet, based on what we know now, I'll probably be trying most of them out. Well, none of them. You can none let of me them. Know how they are? None of them. Do I look at it and go? Not to complete turn off. I want nothing to do with that. Um, so, we'll see. All right. So next on my list, uh, I just want to mention this real quick because it's, it's one of those convergence things. Uh, last night, I was watching uh, my Roku, 
and they have a comic Vine channel on Roku, uh -huh. and they had a bunch of videos posted there for San Diego Comic Con, and one of the interviews was with uh, Peter Tomasi. And considering how you and I on on the podcast just talked about Batman and Robin, the, uh -huh. the comic, which was Batman and Rachel Ghoul for that issue, um, I found it really interesting that that Tomasi was was talking about the the whole Robin Rises thing, and because we're getting Robin Rises Omega, or did it just come out? I think it just came out. Yeah. Or it's or it's or it's coming couple, out next week. Couple Omega. Yeah, maybe it it's came out. It came out. No, it already came out. It came okay. out a, a week or two ago. Okay. Well, I I don't get. I haven't got my comics yet. They're they're on their way. I'll get them next uh, next Tuesday. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so, so uh, he was talking about the Robin Rises Omega and how it's going to end in December with Robin Rises Alpha. Alpha. So they were talking about that. But what but what was interesting was that. He, we're going to get a new Robin. I think we already knew that by this point. But what was interesting was that during the during this interview, he said something about um, how how the book. Okay, this is this is where I, I got confused, and I and I, I didn't go back and listen to the interview again. But uh, he either said that the book is ending, or he was referencing the storyline ending. I don't know which one. It better be the storyline. <laughs> but 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 I'm thinking maybe it could be the book because once once we get Robin Rises Alpha, they could launch it again as a number one as Batman and Robin again. Oh, okay. I feel bad. And uh, I was listening to the um, Pop Culture Happy Hour podcast just today, and they were talking. Uh, they made reference to how. 2015 is the 75th anniversary of Robin. So this year is this year is Batman's 75th. Next year, more importantly, is more Robin's. More importantly, more importantly to me, uh, oh. is, is Robin's 20, 75th anniversary. So oh. we get we get uh, a new Robin at the end of the year, and then next year is is Robin's 75th. So I'm I'm hoping DC will will again pull out all the stops just like they do with Batman. Hey, don't roll your eyes, buddy. Uh, and and celebrate Robin 75th. So I, I'm just looking looking forward to what is coming um, out of this whole Robin Rises thing. Yeah. Well, okay, let's go back a little bit. You, you're making it sound like you thought maybe it would be the end of the Batman and Robin book, right? So that would basically take Robin out of – I mean, they bring him back, right, or give us a new Robin, whatever, whatever the case may end up being, and then he's not in any book. But does that make any sense at all? Well, no, I'm 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 guessing that they would just relaunch it as okay. as, as a new bat, number one Batman and Robin. And I'd be okay with that. I mean, it irritates me, but at the same time, I'd be okay with that. I, I would not be okay with them, with them, you know, bringing Damian back if that's ultimately what they're going to do, which seems like that's going to be the case. And then that's not guaranteed. I know it's not guaranteed. And then have no place to tell the story after he's back. Yeah. Unless of course they bring him back just to kill him again right away before the storyline's over. Oh God, they, they, they. Okay, I don't think they will, and they better not. I'm tired of Robins getting killed, there's, damn it. There's no guarantee. Maybe they just need to kill one more Robin, and it'll be perfect. Yeah, right. Jason, Jason Todd, kill him again. No, no. He should never come Tim back. Tim Drake, Tim Drake, get rid of that oh, sob and that. Oh, yeah, you're right. Again. Oh God, oh God is right. Get rid of that. <laughs> get rid of that sob, and then and it would be perfect because then all the Robins would have been killed. You know what? You know what they should have done with the new Fifty Two. I would have been happy with this. Dick Grayson. Tim Drake uh, never existed. To, or or Jason Todd. Get rid of that. Get rid of both of them. Just have you, you just have Dick Grayson and you have the son that you know the the the, the biological son coming in and mm -hmm. causing all the tension and that that provides an excellent reason for a reason for Dick to move on. Yeah. And except have, they except they didn't want to throw away that much Batman continuity. Mm -hmm. I everybody know. else's everybody else's continuity was fine to chuck out the door, but not Batman's. Yeah. Because Batman has more has more continuity and interest than most of the other characters do, so it's a little harder to throw him away, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. But I like the Red Hood character. I know you don't, and that's fine. Well, I but, like Tim. I like Tim Drake. Well, 
I like right. I like I like the Tim Drake before the New Fifty Two version. But I, but I mean but I agree it would it would made a lot more sense that they would have gotten just gotten rid of those two characters and you're right and had it be had it be Dick you know Dick Grayson Robin and then him leaving being Robin and 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 Damien you know Wayne being Robin that in the time frame that we're talking that we all know that we're supposedly supposed to be stuck with that that makes way more sense. But that's a whole other show, as always. We can get off on the whole arguments about Robin all day long. So, <laughs> well, hey, I plan on talking a lot about Robin next year. So we'll we'll awesome. I'm sure we'll have other conversations. Great. Um, okay, so uh, we are we're over an hour now. So uh, I'm, we're gonna we're just gonna hit the the next few things real quick. Just just some quick thoughts. Uh, so like I mentioned before, Travis, you have see, already seen Guardians of the Galaxy, and I have not. Uh, but even before the movie debuted, Marvel announced the sequel and, and a time frame for the sequel. So the next, the Guardians of the Galaxy 2, I guess, is going to be, what is it, July 2017. Didn't they name off a bunch, right, either right in the con, during the con or right before the con? Didn't they kind of list a litany of, of Marvel books, I mean, Marvel movies and time frames that are supposed to come out, this whole release, clear up into 20, I don't know, 19 or something like that that they have? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, now we don't have. Why would you? Why would you do that? Because you know you're not. You know you're not going to hit those dates, right? I don't know. They've been pretty good about hitting their dates. I think. Because okay. they they seem to be I, they seem to be doing a three year. Yeah. Well, it, just, so, it just gives the fan base something to bitch about. Not that it keeps anybody from going to the movies, even if they're you know a year late. But whatever. Yeah, that's that's true. That's true. Yeah. So, so yeah, you're right. They did announce a bunch of things, but they didn't announce. Uh, what the majority of them are going to be. Mm-hmm. So we get um, Guardians of the Galaxy, which just opened uh, on August 1st. And then we get Avengers in, next May. And then two months after that, apparently Ant-Man is, is slated to come out, even though there's a lot of problems with that movie. Yeah, um, We'll see how that goes. Uh, and then uh, May of 2016, so we only get two Marvel movies next year. And then only two in 2016, Captain America 3 being the first one, and then something. And then uh, 2017, there are three uh, slated to come out, including Guardians of the Galaxy 2. And then in 2018, there are three. And then finally, uh, May of 2019, which I'm assuming will be the next Avengers movie. Maybe. Or maybe maybe 20. I don't know. But yeah, it's kind of weird that they're they're. I mean, they have to they have to plan these things out, right? Because sure, they got they got to put them on the schedule and get them made and get them out there. So I I can see why they would have this information, why they would announce it at San Diego when there's no real information. I don't, I don't know. It's a little bit of hype, sure, but right. So what? Just, to, just to show they've got this big machine running of that is going to crank out all these awesome Marvel movies for you. I guess. I guess. So, without any spoilers, Travis, what did you think of? And I know you talked about this on your show uh, already, but <clears throat> what did you think of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy? It was okay. I, I wasn't. I wasn't horribly impressed. I, I went into the movie knowing I wasn't going to get like you know the next Citizen Kane or or you know Godfather or anything like that. I went in with this is going to be a fun movie. I'm just going to have a fun time watching a fun movie because I mean you're not going to get a whole lot out of it beyond that. Um, and there are some funny lines in it, and you know, Garut and Rocket are um, are funny. Um, I didn't think it was really very charming or funny beyond that. Um, I, I'm assuming that Star Lord is supposed to be charming and funny, and I didn't necessarily think that he was. Um, <laughs> there are some pretty um, hammy. And um, heavy-handed lines in the in moments in the in the movie that I just kind of took me out of the fun moment. <laughs> I guess I don't know. It was okay. It was okay. I, I put it on par with um, Green Lantern. So there you go. I mean, so if you hate Green Lantern, I, I don't. You know, I'm not saying they're the same, but they're to me they are on par. There are things about Green Lantern that I thought were fun and amusing, and there are parts of it that you just go, "Oh my God, I can't believe you just delivered those lines." And you said that, and this part of the script happened the way it did. Please stop. And that's, you know, that for me, that's how that was. I thought Avengers was a much funner movie, as far as just being 
a you know kind of a fluffy superhero movie. I thought it was more fun. Um, I thought Captain America 2 Winter Soldier was a better movie all around um, than those movies were. But so that's my take on it. You know, got to keep up my cred of hating Marvel. I guess I don't know. And I didn't hate the movie, but I didn't think it was as great as what everybody else is hyping it as being. This it's the next Star Wars, you know, or it's the Star Wars of this generation and all the other crazy crap I hear. Whoa, whoa, yeah, right. Whoa, whoa, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I'm not saying don't go see it, but I it, and it wasn't like I was all hyped up for it or anything either. It, you know, um, me going and seeing it opening night, first showing was a lark. I happened to be off and it fit within my time frame, so you know, I went and went and watched it. You know, first showing, which was fun, I guess, for that sake. But you never do that. No, I don't for anything. I don't for <laughs> anything. So, shame on me. <laughs> so the the other interesting thing about this whole Guardians of the Galaxy uh, uh, announcements. So yes, they, they they've already slated the next uh, the sequel to it. Uh -huh. But they're also going to do an animated series. Sure. Makes perfect sense. Sure. It's, it's going to be all Garut and and Rocket. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. It will be. It will be. But but it, it, it's interesting that, and, and I and I have to remind myself because you know Disney's behind this too. So it just it's 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 so bizarre to me that Marvel and and, and by extension Disney is putting so much effort and and uh, um, support behind. This franchise, which is you know, basically unknown, but that makes it easier. Okay, I think it makes it easier because they could do whatever they want to do with it. You're, I think you're Captain America. You're limited. I think you're limited on what you can do because he's Captain America. He he has to fit within a a construct because he's Captain America, right? For the okay. For the common consumer, he has to fit within a certain co construct because he's Captain America. These other characters, you can pretty much do what you want to do with them because we have no concept of them. I, to be honest, honest truth, I know so little about the characters that are in um, in um, Guardians of the Galaxy. They could tell me whatever the hell they wanted to about the characters, and I'm going to take it. At, that's what it is because I don't have any. I don't have any decent working knowledge of those characters, so they can kind of mold them into whatever franchise type of a thing they want them to be. I think it's easier. I think it's easier for them in, in that sense. For Disney, the you know the the people working the puppets back there, um, to do to, to create it to, uh, to whatever they want to. Just like with the whole Star Wars thing, which I think we kind of need to talk about that announcement coming out of um, coming out of San Diego Comic Con, all the Star Wars books, which I don't know nothing about and and very have honest to God very little interest in personally. But it seemed like it was a pretty damn big deal to a lot of other people because yeah. they have their big name talent are going to be writing some of these Star Wars books, right? I mean, isn't mm -hmm. Bendis writing one of them? I know Jason Aaron's writing one of them. You know, I that's just curious that they're having. Yeah, who cares? Well, but we expected that. We 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 knew that that. I didn't expect Marvel... them. I did. I well, I knew Marvel was going to put out Star Wars books. I did not expect their superhero writers to be writing Star Wars books. I, I guess yeah. I didn't expect that. True, or and maybe not so many of them, but. Uh, it certainly makes a certain. It makes a lot of sense that you get your top talent on the Star Wars books, given that you know Disney owns Star Wars, and it yeah, just makes a lot. Uh, you know, from a from a monetary standpoint, it makes a lot of sense for that to happen. Yeah. So no, for me anyway, I make. I, I guess I don't. I, I, it makes sense to me for Disney to to, to glom on this. They can kind of. They can really make it what they want to. Um, because I don't think there's, I don't, I don't think there's enough out there about these people for that. That in you know the everybody has some sort of a concept of what Captain America is kind of like and that sort of thing. So you're, you're, I think you're more limited. Not to say you can't do interesting stories, but he look, he is a thing where these characters they can do whatever they want to do with. Yeah, and, and, and quite honestly, I. I did not read a whole lot of the Guardians of the Galaxy that that these characters are based on. Mm -hmm. The Abnett and Lanning Lanny. stuff during right. the Annihilation stuff, uh, the series and uh, whatnot that they did several years ago. 
Mm -hmm. um, my Guardians of the Galaxy are the ones that are from the future. Right. Charlie X and, and um, I can't remember the names now, but um, those are my Guardians of the Galaxy. So uh, I, I just I find it weird because because they're 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 doing they're, they're they're pushing so much into this franchise that basically no one knows anything about. Um, in other words, Marvel's taking a big gamble. Obviously, it's paying off because we know that the box office money is is huge. Right. Um, Thursday course, opening night, what forty million dollars on just the Thursday night opening. Yeah, and our, I, I think they're expecting like ninety million or maybe a hundred million for the weekend. Yeah. Or maybe is that maybe that was just for Saturday? I don't know. Yeah. But uh, you know what really matters though is, as we found out with Young Justice and Green the, the Green Lantern animated series, you know if if the marketing end of things if you can't sell enough toys, um, that that might be an issue. But I don't think they're going to have a problem with that. I imagine. I don't know. I don't know. That's I I just find it really strange, and I'm really curious how it's all going to work out. <laughs> Everybody's gonna go out and buy a Garut, whatever. Everybody, it's gonna be. We're gonna have the, you know those little flowers that do that, you know. In yeah, the, in, was, in the sun. We're gonna get Garut ones of those. If, I was just thinking about that. We're gonna. They'll be out there, and and you know, everybody that sees the damn movie is gonna have one. I, you know, so I, I don't think it's gonna be a problem because that movie, if nothing else, because this movie has those two characters in it, you know. A raccoon with big guns and a fun tree. Um, I, I think the movie's gold just based on that, as far as money goes and the general populace entertainment and whatnot. I'm just a cranky old man, so I'm hard, I'm, I'm, I'm hard, to, I'm hard to satisfy when it comes to stuff like that. Yeah. Well, you're not exactly the demographic they're going for anyway. No, not at all. Not at all. All right. Uh, let's move on to our final topic uh, and then get out of here. Um, so the uh, as we talked about the, at the top of the show, the the number one uh, per that CBR poll was uh, the Gal Gadot Wonder Woman uh, costume reveal, if you mm -hmm. will, mm -hmm. not a, not a costume malfunction, um, or or well, depending on your opinion about it, I guess uh, it might be a malfunction. Um, but so they 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 released that one, that photo of her in the Wonder Woman outfit for the movie. Yeah, the Dawn, Dawn of Justice movie. I'm not going to say Batman versus Superman. Oops. And yeah, you know, I have to admit, uh, my initial reaction to this, Travis, was, "Wow, there's no color here." But then I thought, you know what? If if that's leather armor or leatherish type armor uh -huh. for her, which kind of makes sense given that she's you know um, an Amazon, Amazon and it's right. you know Roman esque based, I guess right. that right. makes a whole lot of sense. Well, that it, that that way. And it certainly makes sense to pay now where she's at in her career of being Wonder Woman, right? Mm -hmm. If this is early on, if she hasn't decided to wear a costume like the two guys they're going to be in the show, um, it really makes sense then. Mm -hmm. I, I guess for me, you know what? doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, to me, that's so... I mean, I look at the grand scheme of this movie, um, what she looks like Big or tall, you know, wearing drab or wearing bright clothing. I'm more concerned about what she says, how the other how the other um, characters treat her, you know, and and how she's carried and how she's acted. That's way so much more important than what's on her body, or or, yeah. or whether she's big enough to be Wonder Woman, or whether she's muscular enough, or curvy enough, or whatever the hell your other complaints are about visually the way she looks. If if she doesn't have good dialogue, if the dialogue isn't delivered well, and if they don't treat her as an equal, that's what's going to damage and be crappy about that movie. You know, the yeah. fact that she's wearing, you know, boots, you know, that have heels. You know, people are, you know, some people are having fits about that. You know, um, it's pretty funny. Nobody complains about Black Widow. If you look at Scarlett Johansson's <laughs> uh, costume, she's wearing heels all the time in that, and seems quite capable of kicking everyone's ass. So I don't see you know, what the issue is. I mean, I get it. I get the idea. It's, it's unpractical to be, um, you know, in heels versus flats. She's freaking Wonder Woman, okay? So I, I think she can handle um, high heels, but... Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and you, I, well said. Um, I, I, I completely agree with what you said there. Um, I, I did want to, I, but I also wanted to bring, it, bring up the, the whole costume thing. 
because of that very uh, that very opinion. You know, while I had my opinion about how it looked, sure, exactly right. It it really only matters that that how she is presented in the movie, and I thought she looked great considering the criticism I'd I'd been hearing from certain people in fandom uh, about about the actress being able to portray the character based on her dimensions. And I thought, right. that's just right. ridiculous. Right. Right. And, and I, yeah. And I don't mind, I like, actually, I like the costume. I think the costume looks great. It, it looks, it does look dark. It does look a little drab as far as, as far as um, the color of it. But that's one shot in the movie. I mean, who, who knows where that lighting is. She could be someplace where that makes, perf- I mean, the lighting makes her that way. I, I don't, you know, I don't know. I, I But I, I just think, w- you know, I, somewhere on you know Tumblr or someplace, they showed a picture of of you know Linda Carter, Wonder Woman, the what's her name, Paquin or whatever her name, not Paquin, whatever her name is that was supposed to be the TV show. Oh yeah. That Wonder Woman costume and and this Wonder Woman costume, and they kind of point out, okay, there's a reason that this costume looks. I mean, I was excited for that Wonder Woman TV show, but you you get that gaudy, slick, shiny plastic. Brightly colored costume versus this more organic looking costume. The organic costume looks way better, I think. I mean, oh yeah, all, all around. So, I, I don't think I don't and, think it was a bad choice for it to not be rhinestone colored kind of a thing. You know, I don't. You know, better than the Linda Carter one, if if I may be so bold. Yeah, I like the old. I like the traditional Wonder Woman costume. I'm I ne- okay. I never liked the. I never liked Linda Carter's costume uh-huh. in that show. I, I'm. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Um, but I'm certainly okay with her looking like she's wearing something that looks like something a a race of warrior women would wear too. That yeah. makes perfect sense. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. Also, if we're gonna if we're gonna have our characters wearing practical looking things, that makes sense. But lots of superheroes don't wear practical looking things that make sense. So I, I could. To me, I can throw that out the window because they're superheroes. And that's obviously for a lot, a lot of years, ridiculous costumes that these people choose to dress up in is part of the tradition of superheroes. And either you accept it and, and move on or you don't and you don't you don't like superheroes. I, I, For me, anyway, I just don't see how you can have one without the other. Because mm-hmm. Batman, I think Batman looks cool, but it's also absolutely ridiculous at the same time, so... Okay, well, uh, I pretty much had gone through everything on my list, Travis. Is there anything else uh, that you wanted to bring up about San Diego Comic Con? For me, it was that, you know like we talked about at the beginning of the show that, that it seemed like the lack of a lot of comic news actually at the show. It all seemed to be come out in advance of the show, and and that's the thing I'm always most curious about as to why we're we had this big you know this big um, nerd prom that that isn't about comics so much anymore, but all the stuff that comes from comics and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So what's the what's the next big show that's coming up? Um, big show? Yeah. I think the next, isn't New York the next big, really big? Really? Because that's, that's in November. So right. I think you're right, but I... I mean, obviously there's shows. There's shows everywhere all the time. Anymore? There's there's cons everywhere, and if you're interested in just going to cons, there are, there are cons all over the place. Um, but big ones that it feels like stuff gets announced at and people talk really talk about stuff. It's New York, isn't it? I mean, I, that's that's what I was thinking too. But I thought uh, maybe there was because I can't I can't think offhand of, of another another you know you know quote unquote big show uh, where they would do announcement type stuff. So, but I could be wrong. But as you said, we don't really have to worry about that because um, both the big two and uh, you know the other companies as well. I mean, they're all doing this. They're all getting their their brand out there. They're all making these announcements at any opportunity that they have, and they need. I think they need to take that opportunity uh, mm-hmm. to get to get the word out and get people to pre-order their stuff and and uh, you know make the sales and entertain us. More importantly, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's an interesting relationship we have with the, with these companies, you know, because uh, they need to make a profit, but they also need to entertain us. And we're a picky bunch. 
Yeah, we are. <laughs> I was I was trying to think of a nice way to say that, and there, there you go. <laughs> Except I don't think I don't. You know, I mean, yeah, we all have our wants, and we all want all our comics written just for us. You know, we all get in that mode at times, but I don't. I don't think we as comic book fans are that picky. I, I don't think that we're. Ooh. I don't. I don't think we're asking for that much, and um, um, it feels like lots of times that maybe not the creators themselves, but the companies, the big, the big two anyway, companies as a whole go for the lowest hanging fruit, and that's all they want to do. Mm, that's true. That's true. Um, and I, and I, I think it's unfortunate. Okay, so I want to. I'm looking at my phone here because McKelvey. Tweeted earlier today. He said, "I can't, I can't find, I can't find him now." Um, I'm not, I'm not spelling it correctly. Jamie McKelvey. There we go. He was talking about the uh, how um, uh, with with social media today. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, uh, interaction between fandom and the creators, uh-huh. and. Hold on. And, and he's the artist for um, The Wicked and the Divine. Right. So I'm, I've am i confused some people, sorry. I think curiosity, discussion, and involvement between readers and makers is a good thing. Where I draw the line is people expecting and feeling entitled to know every behind-the-scenes decision. Sure. Which I totally agree with him on that. It's just, But there is that element out there that feel like because they consume the product... They should have a say in it in some fashion. Well, don't we all think that? Don't you think that as a consumer? Don't you, you're, you're just saying that you know we want to be entertained. I mean, so you you're paying money, so you do feel like you have some some say in what's there, right? I mean, only not, in this in the sense of do I continue to support this if I'm not sure. getting something out of it? Okay. Do do I feel compelled to to get on Twitter and 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 harass talk? people? Yeah, exactly. Harass that's, people. Because that's what it is. No. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't. No, I don't. That's wrong. That's 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 totally out of line. Um, you vote with your pocketbook, not with your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. You know, part of me wonders if I would be a happier comic book reader if we didn't have social media. Yeah. I was a ha- I was a happier comic book reader. Um, you know, back when we were kids reading comics. Maybe that's just because I was a kid and I didn't have as much, you know, I didn't have as many things to be complained about yet in life. I don't know. I mean, I, well, we complained about books back then, too, if they weren't good. Sure. But we uh, couldn't we couldn't get on, on Twitter back then and say, hey, Perez, you, you screwed that up, buddy. Right, right. Yeah. And, um, I'm, and I'm glad we didn't have that. Yeah. The closest we ever got to that was dialing in to kill Jason Todd or not. That was the closest we ever got to. Yeah, that's true. Uh, to having an impact on, on what went on, or or um, not necessarily an impact, but at least a say, uh, if you happen to get a letter published in the the letter columns at the at the at the back of the book. Sure, sure. So it was well, I guess it was always there then, right? It was always there. We could always complain or write in or whatever. You just didn't necessarily get any communication back. Well, and, Whereas, and it definitely wasn't instantaneous like it is now. Right. Right, but it goes back and forth. I, I mean, I also think that social media is also great because um, I hear about stuff and get exposed to stuff that I wouldn't. Have, I don't think I would be reading sure. half the stuff because of that too. Yeah. Um, um, you know, so but I definitely think he's right. I mean, that's you know, that's square on. We don't need to know everything that's going on. Um, we certainly don't have the right to. I mean, I think I have the right to complain if I if I'm reading something and I don't like it. Uh, I think I have the right to complain. About the fact they don't like it, or what I what or say, and say what I don't like about whatever it is, but but yeah, for me to demand something of a creator or an editor or you know the individuals, I think is a bit is a bit silly. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but sometimes it feels like you know because they're the the complainers, the 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 the, the mm, I'll just say it, the problem people. Um, they're a vocal minority. And so it just seems like, you, you, I mean, you hear, not seems like, you hear a, a lot more about that than, you know, the silent majority, which for the most part is us, or, or you know, we're part of that, I think, where, yeah. where, yeah, we can complain about it, but we're not, we're not, we're not making asses of ourselves online. Right. 
So anyway, I, I get off my soapbox. But it's a small soapbox. Uh, okay. So um, anything else, Travis? All right. Not, not about the con. Uh -uh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, that's uh, that's our look at some uh, news coming out of San Diego Comic Con. Um, I, you know, if you have any comments about this stuff, you can uh, email me at longboxreview uh, at gmail dot com, um, or leave comments at longboxreview dot com, or leave comments below the video, which will be posted uh, on YouTube and Google Plus, I guess. Um, so kind of new to this whole Hangouts thing. Uh, okay, uh, thank you, Travis, for joining me on this. It was kind of a last-minute thing, and I but I really appreciate uh, you joining me, and because uh, I, I love I love hearing your perspective on on these things and, and just having a discussion with you. Yeah, my pleasure. And uh, so, just uh, everybody who's watching this probably already knows you that you're 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 a big deal out there in in the YouTube <laughs> comic book community. Uh, so, but remind people who who may not know yet um, or are listening uh, in the future when this goes out in the podcast feed, where where can they find folks? Where they, where can they find folks find you? All you have to do is go to YouTube and type in Odd Fellows Thoughts, and I should be what comes up. Don't just type in Odd Fellows because then you'll get all the semi-secret society stuff that is out there about the Oddfellows people, but um, Oddfellows Thoughts, yeah. Wait, wait. Uh, what? <laughs> you, you're not familiar with the Oddfellows, thought, uh, Oddfellows um, Society? No. Oh, yeah. oh well, go, you can go type it up there and you'll kill all right. kinds of stuff. All right. You, uh, am I going to find that you're actually a secret member of this thing? No, I am oh. not a secret member. I'm not even a public member. <laughs> <laughs> all right. righty. All right, everybody. Thank you. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, we did have uh, one viewer off and on during the thing. Uh, Travis, I didn't see any any comments. Did you? Nope. Yeah. Okay. So we're just we're just talking to each other. That's fine. But people will see this, I hope, and and enjoy it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, if you're listening to the podcast, thanks for listening.